Be sure to check out our line of custom-made wing bags. Our bags come with these pockets designed to carry the wing hardware and a pocket for wing tubes. Padded divider separates the wing halves. We make our own custom length zippers and we offer graphics on our wing bags and can even design one around your picture of your plane. And we can also put these graphics on t-shirts. I'm starting to get the feeling that this timber is going to be a really popular airplane. The one on the left is my friend Dennis's and he has a DLE 55 in that one. Mine on right here has a DA 35 in it. After balancing, the weight of these two planes are almost identical at 19.94 pounds. Dennis's timber has a clean wing. I installed the slats on mine because they say it works better for slower flying airplanes. I'm not going to claim to know everything that's going on with these slats, but I can see that this wing is stable. And it makes me look like I know what slats are for. This is the maiden takeoff, and if you're at all familiar with Hangar 9 planes, you won't be surprised that I wasn't surprised when it left the ground. I did find out that my all the control movement I can get theory doesn't work real well on this plane. My medium dual rates are about the same thing as the high rates recommended by Hangar 9. Here's another angle of the maiden takeoff, and I was finding out that the recommended high rates are just fine for this plane. I tried my lowest rates, and those are okay for landing, but for everything else, the high rates that they recommend seem to be right. I had to add a little down elevator trim and a little right aileron trim, and after that, it was flying on its own. We had some pretty gusty winds on this maiden day, and every once in a while, it catched a high wing and wanted to roll the plane a little bit more, but it was very controllable. Despite the wind, I never felt like I was fighting for control. And I was seeing that the timber doesn't really need much in the way of rudder coordination when making turns. The tail follows the nose without a lot of assistance. And it was becoming clear that the DA-35's got plenty of power to pull this plane. I had my normal Vest 20B prop on it and the timber seemed to like that a lot. I always start shooting some landing approaches early in a maiden flight just in case I need to get a plane back on the ground. And the timber made that easy. The worst problem the timber has for landing is that it doesn't want to quit flying. I slowed the idle RPM just a little bit and put a couple of clicks of down trim in it, and that seemed to work fine. And here's where I found out that the suspension will bounce if you don't bullseye the landing. And that really is the extent of the bouncing, so it's not a big problem. I always use a tiller style tail wheel, and the ground handling was just fine. I wondered what a 20 pound timber would take off like with a DA35, and it turns out that's not a big deal either. It doesn't just jump into the air, but it takes off pretty quickly and the controls are all solid all the way. I put Dennis on the sticks for a little while, and now he's thinking about putting the slats on his plane because he likes the way this wing is flying. People who watch Dennis fly are pretty sure that he doesn't know how to fly straight down a runway. And the timber doesn't mind if I stuff a bunch of rudder into it on takeoff to shorten up the turn. The timber is very rudder friendly. I've had people that don't own a timber, by the way, tell me that the timber is a grandpa plane and it's too boring to fly. But the truth is, you can make just about any plane a grandpa plane and boring to fly if you fly it boring. The timber, even with the smaller motor, does not mind me banging the sticks around a little bit. And I suspect when we get some time on this thing, we'll be able to do lots more with it, too. We keep looking for something that it might do bad, but it just doesn't seem to do anything bad. With the engine at idle, I kept pulling in the elevator until the timber stalled. The wind was trying to push it over to the left, but as soon as it started falling, everything came right back and it was easy to fly out of it. So far in every attitude I could get the timber in, it flew out of it easily with no heroics on the sticks. I mixed the flaps and aileron, and you get a surprisingly good roll rate. I purposely didn't put any down elevator in when it's inverted. You can see what happens. It is a high-wing airplane. So if you're looking for a fun airplane with a huge flight envelope and easy handling, you need to take a look at the timber. For a long time, I've said that the Hangar 9 Valiant was the best plane they ever made. Well, that may not be true anymore. The timber flies every bit as good as the Valiant, but it seems like it's a little more aerobatic. I also think the timber would be a great choice for a first giant scale plane if you get some help. 